I call this meeting of the Northeast Independent School District to order, let the record show that a quorum of board members is present, that this meeting has been duly called, and that the notice of this meeting has been posted in accordance with the Texas Open Meetings Act, Texas Government Code Chapter 551. The board will now adjourn into executive session pursuant to the following sections of the Texas Open Meetings Act. Texas Government Code Section 551.071, private consultation with the board's attorney, 551.072, discussing purchase, exchange, lease, or value of real property, and 551.074, to discuss personnel or hear complaints against personnel. The time is 5.32. I can use this one. The board will now reconvene into open session. The time is 6.47. Next item. Uh, Sorry. <laughs> On behalf of the trustees, I would like to welcome you to this evening's meeting of the Northeast ISD School Board. This is a business meeting of the board held in public. We appreciate your attendance and request your respectful attention. We welcome your comments during matters from the floor section of the agenda. If you signed up to address a, a specific agenda item, you will be called at that time. Finally, I would like to remind you that it is the mission of the Northeast Independent School District to challenge and encourage each student to achieve and demonstrate academic excellence, technical skills, and responsible citizenship. Thank you. Next item. Four invocation and, I'm um, sorry, five invocation and pledge of allegiance. Mr. Clary. Madam President, members of the board, Dr. Gotardi, executive staff and guests, if you will stand for the invocation and the pledge. Father, as we begin our meeting tonight, I want to thank you for the blessings you have given me and others in this room to serve this district and the opportunity to educate every child that comes to our door, no matter the circumstance. Father, we know the decisions that are made by this board are not always easy or popular, but I want to thank you for granting them the wisdom to make the decisions that are always best in the, that are always in the best interest of every student. I ask a special blessing upon the students and administrators, faculty and staff that are traveling this summer, and I pray that you watch over them as they reach their destinations, and I pray that you bring them home safely to us. I also want to thank and ask that you be with those serving in harm's way that are protecting the freedoms that we all too often take for granted. 
Thank you for the rain you have blessed us with today, and I humbly ask for more, if it be your will. I ask all these in your name. Amen. Amen. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Honor the Texas flag. I pledge allegiance to thee, Texas, one state under God, one and indivisible. Thank you, Mr. Clary. We say an amen about the rain, too. It was a huge blessing. All right, next item. Six matters from executive session. A, personnel, including but not limited to administrative appointments pursuant to government code section 551.072. One, possible action regarding routine personnel, including but not limited to administrative appointments. Do I have a motion regarding personnel? I move that we approve personnel as presented. Thank you, do I have a second? Second. Thank you, Mr. White. I have a motion and a second. There can be no discussion. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Next item. B, introduction, uh, sorry, two introductions. Dr. Thank you, Gotardi, sorry. Thank you, Ms. Galindo. <laughs> Board members, uh, executive staff, ladies and gentlemen, it's my privilege this evening to introduce some new uh, principals to the school district and some other uh, important um, positions. We have a new principal at Lee High School, Mr. Rick Canals. Rick joined the Northeast family in 1997 as a trainer and health teacher at Roosevelt High School. Mr. Canales received his bachelor's degree in education from Southwest Texas State University, San Marcos, in 1982. Additionally, he earned his master's degree in educational administration from Texas A&M University, Kingsville, in 1998. Most recently, he was the principal at Roosevelt High School. Mr. Canales has a total of 24 years in education. Welcome and congratulations, Rick. Thank you. We have a new principal at Roosevelt High School, Mr. Melvin Eckert. Melvin joined the Northeast family in 1995 as a special education teacher at Jackson Middle School. Mr. Eckert received his Bachelor's of Business Administration in 1994 and earned his Master's of Special Education in 1997 from Southwest Texas State University, San Marcos. Most recently, he was the interim principal at Roosevelt High School and prior to that, the assistant principal at Johnson High School. Mr. Eckert has a total of 17 years in education. Welcome and congratulations, Melvin. New principal of uh, Colonial Hills Elementary School, Ms. Jana Mascaro. <laughs> Jana joined the Northeast family in 2004 as a program coordinator in the special education department. Ms. Mascaro received her bachelor's degree in interdisciplinary studies from Texas A&M University in 1992. Additionally, she earned her master's degree in school psychology from Southwest Texas State University in San Marcos in 2001. Most recently, she was the assistant principal at Bush Middle School. Ms. Muscarl has a total of 18 years in education. Congratulations, Jana. <laughs> New principal of Longs Creek Elementary School is Mr. Glenn Ford. Glenn joined the Northeast family in 1999 as a third grade teacher at Redland Oaks Elementary School. Mr. Ford received his bachelor's degree in interdisciplinary studies from Southwest Texas State University in San Marcos in 1999. A lot of bobcats here tonight. <laughs> Additionally, he earned his master's degree in educational administration from Texas A&M University, Kingsville in 2004. Most recently, he was the assistant principal at Longs Creek Elementary School. Mr. Ford has a total of 13 years in education. Congratulations. Thank you, Glenn. <laughs> New principal at Oak Grove Elementary School, Mr. Harold Massey. <laughs> Harold joined the Northeast family in 2001 as a teacher at El Dorado Elementary School. Mr. Massey received his bachelor's degree in elementary education from the University of Texas at San Antonio in 2001. 
Additionally, he earned his master's degree in educational administration from Texas A&M University in 2005. Most recently, he was assistant principal at Wilderness Oak Elementary School. Mr. Massey has a total of 17 years in education. Congratulations, Harold. We have a title change this evening for our new Executive Director of Adult and Community Education, Ms. Rebecca Gossin. Becky. <laughs> Becky joined the Northeast family in 2001 as Director of Adult and Community Education. Ms. Gossin received her Bachelor's of Science degree in Vocational Home Economics Education from Ohio State University in 1974 and Community Education Leadership Training from the Texas A&M University Center for Community Education in 1990. Most recently, she was the Senior Director of Adult and Community Education. Ms. Gossin has a total of 38 years in education. Congratulations, Becky. <laughs> we have a new Executive Director of School Nutrition Services, Ms. Sharon Glosson. Sharon? Sharon is joining the Northeast family as Executive Director of School Nutrition Services Department. She received her bachelor's degree in nutrition from Texas Christian University in 2003. Additionally, she earned her master's degree in nutrition from the University of the Incarnate Word in 2006. Most recently, Ms. Glosson was the Director of Child Nutrition in the Judson Independent School District. Ms. Glosson has a total of 19 years in education. Welcome, Sharon. Oops, has a total of nine years in education. I had several correctees up here a little while ago. Uh, board members also have one more introduction. I also want to uh, let the audience know, let, let our community know that, that we've changed the, the title of our chief financial officer is now going to be titled our associate superintendent for business services and he will still retain his chief financial officer um, label <laughs> and we welcome Dan Villarreal. Thank you. And that concludes our introductions. Thank you, Ms. Galindo. You're so welcome. Congratulations to everyone in your new course that you'll be headed on starting probably yesterday. But um, we're glad that you're here. You're welcome to stay and endure the meeting with us, or you can feel free to, to leave at any point. You won't hurt our feelings. Madam but we're President, glad you're here can tonight. I make yes. one comment? Absolutely. Is that all right? A point uh, of privilege? It's yes. to the principals. I, I just want to say I've been a parent at Northeast for 19 years, and I have one year left with my senior in high school. And I want you all to know how important your job is, not just to the students, but to the community, and what how you can really change a community yep. as a principal. I mean that wholeheartedly. I've seen it firsthand as a parent, and I hope that you'll you'll remember that because you're such pillars to our to our students, our families, and we count on you for so much. The jo the job is much larger than the title of principal, and I admire you for what you do. And I hope that you'll remember that when you go out and and begin your your quest. It's much more than just academics and students. I, th I feel that quite a bit. So thank you for indulging me. Thank you. I c I'm I mean, sure I can say we all agree with you. Thank you so much. Very important. Yes, absolutely. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, look, they're all leaving. <laughs> you have to leave your kids here because we think they're pretty cute. We like the children. <laughs> Yeah, you're not allowed to leave. Look at that. Too cute for words. I know. Gonna, see, so we're going to keep one. He's staying. <laughs> Thank you, Glenn. He can stay here. It's okay. <laughs> we'll take him. All right, next item. B, possible action on the purchase, exchange, lease, or value of real property. And we have no action there. C, possible action on litigation. No action there. Next item. Seven, new business for possible board action. A, internal audit. One, possible action regarding 2012-2013 annual audit plan. Sharon, are you coming up? There you are. I am. Uh. 
Okay. I'm on. Uh, Madam President, um, members of the board, Dr. Gotardi, executive staff, and guests. Tonight I wanted to bring the internal audit plan to you for approval. Uh, so I'm going to go through a um, presentation, just especially for those who are new to the board. Shannon. Um, <laughs> I'll go through the staff introductions, yeah. background, um, why do we have an annual plan, how we develop it, the key projects that we'll work on this year, as it assumes it's approved. And we have an anti-fraud action plan. I'll give you a summary of what we did this last year and then our recommendation for approval. So I asked our, the staff to come here tonight so that you could see their faces. Uh, I have our internal auditors, are Bianca Trevino. She has been with the district for about 18 months. She came to us from AT&T with extensive audit experience, which is very important. Uh, from our perspective, mine particularly. And then we have Misty Teyes, who's been with us about six months. She's our campus person who goes out to the campuses. And she's uh, also had AT&T experience, so Rob, two of them from <laughs> AT&T. Uh, in the audit world, there's nothing like being in a corporate audit department where they have a large staff. You get excellent training and about work paper preparation, all that busy stuff that accountants do. And then we have our audit technician is Julie Bennett, and she has been with the district for quite a while. Um, as the rest of us are relatively new to the school district, she is our resource, the most valuable resource for historical information, as well as sometimes when we're trying to use systems, she knows how to use them much better than us. So we uh, are very fortunate to have her on staff. But I wanted you to see the faces of your audit department. So the background, the Government Accounting Office and IIA standards require that an annual audit approve it, annual plan be approved, and our House Bill 1 requires that I report to the Board of Trustees now. In the past, I would report directly to the superintendent, but that bill changed things uh, several years ago. So I report to you all, and with a dotted line to Dr. S uh, Gotardi, but we all work in concert together as a team. Why do we have one? Well, it's required. Um, I need to uh, get approval from you to make sure I'm concentrating on the things that you would like to hear about and see about. Um, it provides a framework for our contributions to the organization, and it provides senior leadership an opportunity to um, request assistance. So we go through it. Um, we obtain suggested topics from management. I do that by having one-on-one -on -one meetings with the associate superintendents and Dr. Gotardi, and then I request um, through email from executive directors and uh, principals as well if they have any topics that they think we should cover that we haven't covered. So we put all that together, and then we use a risk assessment process. Um, I did look at it this year, and I made some changes. We previously had nine risk factors, and I reduced it to seven. The two that were eliminated were, um, we had a separate one for a request by an associate and a request by a superintendent, and I didn't think that those needed to be two separate items with different risk factors. Um, and then I l eliminated the moderate mandated by law because when I looked down the list, everything was mandated that we were looking at. So it really didn't differentiate well as far as a risk. So we, I changed that and then I tweaked the weight factors to be appropriate how I felt subjectively. I also did contact um, another school district to take a look and they as well, they even had fewer risk factors. So we may be able to do that at some future, but it did help me to see someone else's um, practice. So it considers materiality, potential for fraud, and change in resources. Um, and that starts in the annual, the attachment to the annual plan that you would have received in your board packet. And um, that should be, I think, on page 14. Thirteen, fourteen, or the seven risk factors. Um, so anyway, we prioritize workload based on risk, and I can override that um, based on what might be hot topics in the industry, school districts mainly. Um, and then I prepare the audit plan that you have in your packet. 
So these are the different weight, the factors, requests, fraud potential, materiality, public scrutiny, management controls, prior coverage, and then change in resources. And a change in resources means did the principal leave? And we have a new principal, did um, the bookkeeper change? Those kind of things that could impact on the campus as well as the directors in a department might change. Um, so we put that all into our model that we use that comes up with a prioritized list. And the results this year were campus audits. High schools and middle schools are top on the list for looking at um, expenditures, attendance, uh, fundraising, lots of different things. We look at inventory at the schools. Um, in discussions with Dr. Scheffler and others, it seems like that's where we need to focus. And then we have the travel expenditure review, which is district-wide. And then special projects, wherever the superintendent and or associate has something that comes up needs to be reviewed. Um, and then our hotline can also provide that. Other things are the purchasing card program, the annual review, superintendent contract and expenses, that's something we do each year. Uh, fine arts performance receipts, um, a camera surveillance review, and then our external audit support, which we do each year in order to reduce the fees that our external auditor charges us. We do a portion of the work and then they just review it and accept it. So it saves us the district some money. We also do an annual conflict of interest review. We're uh, monitoring the AIM, which is the loss in financial software implementation. And then uh, we're continually looking for fraudulent indicators if we see something that we need to investigate further. Each time we go into an area, we think about what fraud possibilities are there and make sure we cover those in our audit. Um, we also have an anti-fraud action plan, and that's an attachment in your that did not change. I haven't modified that. Oh, that would be the next step to take a look at that and see if it needs modification, um, revising. But it um, provides direction in detecting, reporting, and then the disp disposition of potentially fraud fraudulent situations. So that's kind of what we're what we want to look at next year, this coming year, this school year. This is a recap. Um, we did the CRMS inventory, which we do each year. We did athletic gate receipts and provided some recommendations and changes for that. Uh, we can't, had two campus audits. We did several special projects this year um, and some department advisories. And then we had 16 hotline items that we followed up. Generally, our hotline concerns tend to be um, HR related, so they get forwarded to HR or um, my child didn't get the bus this morning and that ends up on our hotline even though we um, suggest that that's not what belongs on the hotline. <laughs> so generally they get forwarded to the director and I do follow up to make sure that they've addressed them in the appropriate manner. Um, so at this point um, I'm asking that you approve the annual audit plan as provided but I'm uh, more than welcome to answer any questions that you have. Are there board members with questions? Uh, I, I have one question that I, I wasn't familiar with the acronym on the oh. top of the last page. CRM or something. CRMS, I apologize. That's the uh, Controlled Resource Management System. It's the automated application that we use to track all of our inventory, the computers, um, okay. all different kinds of inventory, drawing blank, laptops, phones, um, everything. <laughs> Docking stations, yes, every one of these computers is on the list and um, we do an inventory, we sample and count that. As well as every campus and department audits their own once a year, we just sample count to verify. Thank you. Sure. Ms. Bresnahan. I have a question regarding risk factor number two, mm -hmm. the likelihood of fraud waste or abuse so how do you how do you identify what is likely to be fraudulent it's subjective it's subjective yes okay all of it is yeah um, you, you we try to put numbers to it mm -hmm. but it does come down to my um, but thought process. <clears throat> Did you have some items in particular that you were No, no, no? I'm just okay. thinking when you, when you say subjective, is it based on prior fraudulent activity, would you say? Is that one no, of your parameters? That's, that would be one of the parameters, but it would also be just how likely is it. 
um, is our control, internal control system stronger there or could right. it be weaker there? Um, an example, mm -hmm. um, expenditures that go through our budgeted fund process through central office have several people looking at them. Whereas if it's at a campus um, through the SAFCAP, which is our student activity funds, campus right. activity funds, fewer people mm -hmm. look at that. So you might give a higher rating for um, campuses versus a department. I see. You know, departments, all of theirs go through budgeted funds, right. whereas the campus has those other accounts. Mm -hmm. and, and do you reassess your methodology? So <laughs> this year I, I did. Okay. <laughs> and do you plan to do it I would periodically. Annually or? Yeah. Well, I think about it annually. Sure. I would hate to change it annually um, because then you kind of lose some continuity there. But this year I looked at the risk factors because I felt that nine was. Um, some of them were redundant. Some of them were redundant. Yeah, so I didn't right. think that was um, appropriate. And then, as I said, I'm going to go through the fraud plan this next year. Mm -hmm. And then we have some um, tweaking to do on our mission statement charter that I'm slowly taking on and so if you do encounter a, an item that that reveals fraud or waste I'm sure you go back and and reassess and come up with a, a plan or a methodology so that that's eliminated yes okay. that's that's part of the audit work is mm -hmm. to identify the right the problem and come up with a solution identify the root cause sometimes right. we think we know what caused it but, but you actually need to do some research and find out what the root cause and then put in control systems to prevent it. And if it's likely to be, like if it were identified at a campus, we'd wanna, since we have 65 like sure. campuses, you'd wanna make sure it's addressed at all campuses, not just that one specific one. And do you feel like this new methodology has improved overall from last year? That it you've changed? It to be and, seen. Okay. Um, because uh, if I, I really feel that the campus, the high school and middle schools need to be addressed this year, but mm -hmm. if I go out there and I find that there's not mm -hmm. um, a higher risk there, then I need to rethink the process because okay. that's why I'm, be the, po the idea is that we have limited resources right. and can't cover everything, I so understand. I'm trying to address the, the higher risk, but if I find that's not the case, then I'll have to rethink it to maybe the weight's not right or I'm not looking at the right factors. Thank you. You're welcome. Thank you. I just wanted to say that I'm always so impressed with the incredible job that, that you do as, as a team and, and, and in leading the audit process. It's just amazing the detail and the, the thoughtfulness that goes into this. So well, thank you. just thank you for such a tremendous job. And I know you had great instruction. Yes, mm -hmm. I did. Yes. They were great men. Yeah. Um, but I want to say the staff, we work well as a team great to work with these ladies. Wonderful. Thank you all so much for all you do. We appreciate it. All right, next item. Can we need a motion? Oh, I'm sorry. Can I have a motion? Yes, you may absolutely <laughs> have a motion. Who would like to make the motion? And I move that we approve the annual audit plan for fiscal year 2012-2013. Thank you, Ms. Huey. Do I have a second? Second. Thank you, Ms. Grona. I have a motion and a second. All those in favor, say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. I tell you, I don't know what I do without Ms. Huey. She just keeps me on my toes. I'm grateful. All right, next We're item. Team. We are a team. We're a team of eight. We're good. <laughs> next item. B, board policies. One possible action regarding board policy update 93, second and final reading. Dr. Gotardi. Thank you, Mrs. Glendo. Board members, we bring to you tonight update 93 for second reading. I do want to point out that um, you'll see in your listing of board policies that CW is listed there as naming facilities. And if you'll recall, not too long ago, probably six or eight months ago, we actually approved CW local in, in our naming of facilities. So you'll see in this document, in this attachment, that we've uh, included that particular local board policy because that's the one that we want to keep with this particular uh, board policy. Great. If you have any questions, we have staff here ready to answer them. All right. Do I have a motion to approve the item? I move to 
move to approve its second and final reading. Local policies included in update 93 as submitted. Thank you, Ms. Huey. Do you have a second? Second. Yes. Go ahead, Dr. Ms. Gunkari. Ms. Oh, I'm sorry, but I think to be uh, technical, mm -hmm. we need to, to recommend approval of update 93 with the exception of local policy CW because that one's already in place. Is that correct, Marie? Okay. I'd like to amend my motion to amend my motion to uh, with the exception of CW. With okay. exception of CW local. local. Mm -hmm. Do I have a second? Second. Thank you, Mr. White. Okay, I have a motion and a second. Uh, is there any discussion? Any other questions? Seeing none, all those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Next item. Two, possible action regarding board policy update 94, second and final reading. Dr. Gotardi. Thank you, Ms. Galindo. Board members, uh, at our last meeting, we brought you the first reading of update 94. Obviously, this is the second reading of, of update 94. We're asking your uh, approval tonight to, to approve this particular board policy update. Uh, if I recall, Mr. Vill Villarreal, this is the one dealing with um, uh, school allergies. allergies, food allergies. There you go. Yeah. Food allergies. Anaphylactic reactions. And if we, if you have any questions, we'll, we have staff here ready to answer. But that's what Update 94 is all about. Mm -hmm. Right. Do I have a motion regarding this agenda item? I move that we approve second and final reading of the attached to local policy included in update 94. Thank you, Ms. Bresnahan. Is there a second? Second. Thank you, Ms. Grona. I have a motion and a second. Are there any questions? No, but staff's really been busy with policy. <laughs> all right, seeing none, all those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Next item. Three possible action regarding board policy EI local first reading. Is that you, Jana? It is. Okay, thank you. Sorry. Um, President Glendo and board members, we're asking that you uh, uh, do approve the first reading of board policy EI. And if you have any questions on that, Dr. Dalton is here and we can talk specifically about that one policy. All right. Do I have a motion regarding the policy? I move to approve the first reading of board policy EI, EI local as presented. Thank you, Ms. Huey. Do I have a second? Second. Thank you, Mr. White. I have a motion and a second. Are there any questions? None? All right. Seeing none, all those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Next item. See campus, campus support. One possible action regarding memorandum of understanding for Juvenile Justice Academy. And that would be Dr. Scheffler. Hi, Madam, Dr. Scheffler. Hello. <laughs> Madam President, members of the board, Dr. Gotardi, this is regarding the Memorandum of Understanding um, for the JJA, Justice, <clears throat> excuse me, Juvenile Justice Academy. By Texas st statute, uh, it requires the board to enter into a memo, uh, MOU with the Bear County Juvenile uh, Board. Uh, there have been some changes to section or attachment C additions to the 37.07 reasons for expulsion. And uh, I'll just draw your attention. There has been no change to the cost to the district per day per student, which in my opinion is quite high anyway, but $135.85. So we're asking that you uh, uh, approve the 2012-2013 Memorandum of Understanding. Ann McNabb is here if you would like to get in some real particulars on the M MOU. Are there any questions regarding the MOU? No? All right, I have a motion. I make a motion to approve the 2012-2013 Memorandum of Understanding between the Bear County Juvenile Board and Northeast ISD as presented. Thank you, Ms. Grona. Is there a second? Second. Thank you. Bridget, I have a motion and a second. Any questions? Last chance. All right. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Next mm -hmm. item. 
D, consent. One, business services. A, annual over $50,000 purchases. B, bid items. C, bid extension items. D, 2011-2012 cooperative purchasing contracts report. Two, construction. A, Lopez Middle School Central Energy Plant Chemical Water Treatment Services contract bid award. B, easements for drainage, streets, utilities, and various service agreements in support of the Vineyard Ranch Elementary School and Littleton Gymnasium projects. C, professional services contracts, construction contracts, and related contract amendments. Three, minutes from May 2012. Four, end of consent. Thank you. Are there board members wishing to pull an item from consent? Go ahead, Ms. Bresnahan. Okay. This would be, I never know. Annual uh, uh, D1A. Yeah, 1A. Mm -hmm. I was going to pull that one too, so. And um, there were some, I think. I think yes. there was a second consent item for, yeah. Mm -hmm. Or do, since we've got separate C, oh right. no, it's all consent. Yeah, there's, right. there's another one. So we'll have to approve the whole okay. thing or the whole thing minus 1A or the whole thing minus 1A and whatever. Okay, so it's definitely the 50K, which is 1A and All under 1A. 50K. Okay. Oh, no, 1D. 1D. Okay. And 1D. 1D. Okay. Do I have a motion to approve consent uh, without 1A and 1D? So moved. Thank you. Second. D. D. D is in, is in dog. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. Thank you, Ms. Perkins. Do I have a second? Second. Thank you, Mr. White. I have a motion and a second. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Yeah. Next item. All right, we're back to business services. A, annual over $50,000 purchases. Okay. Ms. Bresnahan. Yes. I would like to, I believe the question is for Mr. Bohannon. Is that correct? Could that you? Correct. Yes, <laughs> I'd like to know, I'd like some information on ACC Consulting and the category is various and the description is Consulting Services. Which and one this, is it? It's ACC Consulting. And the second one is Agile Mind Education. Oh, that's. It's that first, that first uh, chart. The fourth, the fourth okay, yes, entry. That's it. Pardon? Page 118. Yes, page 118. Okay. Agile Mind, Jana, that is. Uh, and ACC Consulting. They're both consulting as descriptions. I'd like yeah. to know what, what are we consulting? Yes, Madam President, uh, members of the board, Dr. Cotardi, executive staff and guests. ACC Consulting, I think, is the one that does work. Uh, is it Mr. Arias that works for construction management? Gary? Is ACC Consulting the, the ones who do the audits? Yes. They, they're the ones who audit um, some of the construction accounts for the district. And is that a normal, is that pr normal procedure? Do we normally have this? What? I'm always intrigued when it says consulting Gary, services. The question is about ACC Consulting Services. What, the, yes, what sir, they are, do they do? Uh, Ms. Bresnahan, they are contracted specifically to audit all CM at risk contracts. Since in, under those contract situations, the contractor is um, more in charge of the financial management of the project. Mm -hmm. We, uh, at the end of each project, then uh, consult with a third party auditor who does a complete audit of the project to make sure that the books are right. And is this under the normal scope of business, would you say? We've done this since the 1998 bond. Okay. Uh, okay, what about, thank you very much. Ma'am. <laughs> Agile mind. Mm -hmm. I'll, de I'll defer to Jana on this one. Okay. 
President Galinda and board members, uh, Ms. Brezhnehan. Sure. Agile Mind is a math software that this district has used in the past several years, and I know that just uh, Mr. Bohannon moved all of the bid items forward that we have used in the past. However, this year we do not plan to renew the contract with Agile Mind. Um, we are in negotiations with them, perhaps for a lower amount uh, in the $100,000 range, and we have not come to an agreement on that. It's an excellent software. It handles um, all of the state standards. However, it is not as user friendly as we'd like it to be. So based on our meetings with the company, we are not going to continue that contract as is. I'm very glad to hear that. Thank you very much. Thank you. And my question was to Dr. Gotardi, um, and memory doesn't always work with me real well, so I could be very wrong about this. But typically when we have the annual over 50K, is it this much, is it this much information? It seems to me like this is a much bigger list. Nor normally I would tell you that yes, it's usually a, a huge listing mm -hmm. of contracts, but I'm gonna defer uh, if you don't mind, uh, Ms. Sure. Glendale, to David, because this is really David's best. Okay. Right. Well, what we do to come up with the list is we actually run a report for the year from July 1 last year mm -hmm. up until, actually this one was through June, I believe June the 2nd. And what we run the report, we want to see every vendor that we spend over $50,000 with. Right. And then we will take that list and see how we are bid compliant with those uh, with those vendors mm -hmm. and then we take that uh, we take that list and that's the list that we bring to you so these are pretty much all the people vendors that we spend over fifty thousand dollars with this last school year okay so typically when we as a board get an over 50k item is that because it went over the budget or something came up like fuel increase or no, on, and David, help me out here, but on a monthly basis, we want to bring to you every contract that's over $50,000 that we're entering into at that time. Right. This particular month, mm -hmm. we're bringing you a year's look at one time. A yeah, year's our, okay. snapshot. our board policy states that we have to bring you every... So you still bring it. That's really my question. Thank you. We won't have to bring these transactions to you again for the year. Okay. Because we already, and most of these are multiple, also we're bringing the bid renewals, which a lot of these over 50,000 are mm -hmm. covered under the bid renewals. Okay. But we have to bring them separate because it's a bid item versus an over 50K purchase. Got it. So a lot of times you'll see multiple vendors okay. on both lists. Okay, that makes more sense. But okay. we bring them all at one time so we can not have to bring all these uh, all throughout the year. Now what we will bring you throughout the year, the new stuff. Okay. Okay, great. So, Thank you. So you're not necessarily entering into an agreement. No. This is for our approval so that you have the ability to. That is correct. So, so when I see things that say miscellaneous and various services, it makes me really, my skin starts to itch. Why, why is that? I, the big number, now of course I, can, I had them all last night and now I can't find them. When you have as a description, you know, miscellaneous or various <laughs> services, is it because we've used them as a contractor in the past? Yes. So when we give you the authority to use them again, that's what makes me anxious. And we're not really quite sure what we're using them for as a board. Uh, most of the, well, we try to explain exactly what we are trying to use them for, especially if they're, if you look on the bid compliant and they're on a bid, also the bids that you are renewing tonight would this probably explain example. more. This is an example. This is what I was looking for. Okay. The cooperative purchasing network, categories various, description is miscellaneous, and it's a $5 million estimated expenditure. Okay, what those are, and you'll see ones through there, you'll see Region 20, you'll see U.S. communities. These are our purchasing co-ops. I, I, I figured there were co-ops. And so the that's... reason it's various is because there are multiple, multiple vendors and bids on those co-ops that we use. So, so it's, it's kind of like when you all approve a catalog bid and we bring multiple vendors on that catalog bid. We don't know if we're going to use all those vendors or not. Okay. So how do you control, because we're, that's a, a, we're all voting for this. We are all voting for this. Mm -hmm. And I don't really know what I'm voting for. And that's hence the anxiety. So does, how do we, how do you control that? I, well, everything. I, I don't, that I don't, I, I just need to know how that works. 
All, a lot of these things, first of all, uh, they're in the budget that y'all have approved okay. in the budget. So that, that's the second okay. process is that anything that is over $50,000, well, first of all, all purchases go through the purchasing department. We look yes. at every single one of them. If it is over $50,000 or if it's not over $50,000, I want everything on a bid. And so, first of all, we look to see that it is on a bid. Okay. And one of the... Uh, one of the methods that we have in the bid law is to use co-ops. Right, and so, I know that they're very, they're cost efficient. Yes. I understand why you use them. And so once we, if they are using a co-op vendor, mm -hmm. it means they've gone out and done their research and uh, got it, uh, have received the price. You know, a lot of them technology. They use uh, uh, DIR a lot, which is the state uh, technology co-op. Yeah. Um, region 20, we use region 20 a lot. and. Yes. And I know one of the ones you pull, you see we pay a fee for that. Mm -hmm. So all of these co-ops, we, so when somebody wants to buy something and they have a vendor but they don't have a bid on it, we go and research the co-ops and a lot of times we find the vendors on the co-ops that are already on bid that we are able to use because the bid has already been done. Okay. So, so, so we're approving it and that gives you the authority and then you go out and and actually bid the, the good that's that's we get quotes we don't the get, bids already been quotes. done right we get quotes you get quotes and based on that you award we, the I don't know what vendor yes the vendor okay and we can go ahead and proceed with the purchase order at that point if we didn't do that we would be bringing every vendor from every co-op every every time for an over fifty thousand dollar purchase i just need to understand the mechanics and i and this is something that we came up with because when this first started mm -hmm. because we used to not bring the vendors on co-ops because they were already on bid but right. then our, our local policy said anything over fifty thousand dollars i was coming to every special board meeting and and every regular board meeting bringing all of these co-op vendors that were already on bid. So in an effort to streamline that process, this is what we do once a year is bring, here's what we think we'll spend, doesn't mean we're gonna spend it. Exactly. That's the other thing. Like it just, just gives us the authority and then some of these we won't even use. There's others that we bring you an amount that, guess what, we're gonna go over that, I will have to bring it back to you. And again, this is tied into the budget. It's already yes. accounted for in the budget. Yes. But I'm sure you're very fiscally responsible with this yes. amount, and <laughs> if you can beat it, you do. Yes. Okay. Thank you. And we do most of the time. Good. That's that's good. My skin doesn't itch as much. <laughs> Did you have a question about uh, 1D? Oh, we have to do a motion. Yeah, Thank was, you, Miss Huey. Was that was 1D. Oh, that was B. That was A. Well, she did both. That was both. one A. She did, did both. both. You asked yes. both questions on yes. both items. So would you like to make a motion to approve both items? Oh, yes. no, we have to do them separate. Sorry. Okay, Madam President, I would like to make a motion to accept consent with 1A annual over 50K purchases. Thank you. Do I have a second? Second. There can be no, discu no discussion. All those in favor? Oh, you can discuss. Yeah, you can discuss. <laughs> I but we don't you. have any. You think after six years sitting back here, I'd learn <laughs> some of this, right? Okay, is, is there any more questions? <laughs> okay, seeing none, all those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Ms. Bresenham, would you like to, would you like to make yes. the, oh, you still have to read it? Okay, next item. Okay, so that was on two, uh, D1D, 2011-2012 cooperative purchasing contracts report. Okay, Madam President, I would like to move to accept consent item D, 2011-2012 cooperative purchasing contracts report. Thank you, do I have a second? Second. Thank you, Ms. <laughs> Perkins. Is, are there any questions? Seeing none, all those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed, motion carries. Next item. Eight reports. A, financial statement, review of expenditures, investment monthly report, government code 2256.023. Those have been provided for you. Next item. Nine matters from the floor. 
This time is provided for citizens to address the board on issues or concerns other than the character or name of any student, staff, or board member. Each person who signs up shall be allowed to address the board one time for no more than five minutes. Therefore, a presentation involving more than one person is not permitted. Board members cannot respond to issues or concerns that were not listed on the agenda, but they may assign it an issue to a future, future agenda or to the administration for further study. Ms. Huey. Columba Wilson. Sorry, Columba Wilson. Hello, good evening. Mrs. President, members, Mr. Superintendent, can you hear me well? Okay, I, uh, I'm gonna give you some paperwork. Don't and forget, Ms. Wilson, to give us your name oh, and address. Oh, I'm sorry. That's See, okay, I dear. Know now. <laughs> my name is Columba Wilson. My address is 2931 Quelox, San Antonio, Texas. I wanna talk to you about child abuse, and I would like to have uh, Mrs. Vicki Ernest uh, to talk to you about it because she has more experience than I do. It's just like you all know my grandson was victimized. So she's going to talk on my behalf, if okay. you don't mind, please, okay. because, you know, my English is not that good anyway. So can I approach you and give you my papers? Yes, ma'am. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Okay, Good Mrs. evening. Just, hold on one second. Let us get. We need We're calling Vicki Ernst. Yes. Hi. Uh, my name is Vicki Ernst. I appreciate um, the. Don't forget uh, to give us your address. I'm right. sorry. Thank it's you. all right. Uh, my address is 15254 in Flying Circle uh, in Helotus, Texas. Um, I've been in San Antonio for over 30 years, and um, even though I'm not in uh, any ISD, I do have uh, close siblings who did graduate and whose children do attend uh, any ISD schools. Um, just to give you um, uh, just a, a few um, uh, ideas or, or some information uh, about what I do. Um, I have over 23 years experience in the field of child abuse and neglect. The first 10 years were spent with Child Protective Services, both here in, um, in San Antonio as well as in Fairfax, Virginia. Uh, the, past, the, the next 11 years were spent with uh, Child Safe, which is the Child Advocacy Center uh, for Bear County. In the last two years, I've been uh, providing consultation, grant writing, and um, strategic planning for child-focused agencies in the San Antonio Bear County area. So I have taken what I've learned over the years and are helping agencies uh, community-wide to be able to, um, to get more funding and to be able to operate in a more efficient manner concerning the, uh, the issue of child abuse and neglect. The information that uh, Ms. Wilson gave you uh, tonight is concerning Jenna's law. Uh, it was passed in 2009. I think you all are probably uh, familiar with it. Uh, actually, the Child Advocacy Centers in Texas was instrumental in getting this law passed. Um, it is to provide information to, uh, for all school staff, parents, and children concerning uh, specifically child sexual abuse. In 2011, Jenna's law, Jenna's law was expanded to uh, provide information to all of those involved uh, concerning child abuse in general. Um, and of course the efforts are to make people more aware, to raise awareness, um, and to be able to protect our children better. Um, the reason why uh, we came to talk to you tonight is um, it, we do have concerns that this information is not being um, uh, given to school staff, to uh, the parents, and to the children. Um, and it, because it is mandated by the state of Texas for all school districts in the state to provide this information, we are concerned that because of everything that uh, you all have to do and school staff has to do, it's very difficult to fit in this specific training. And I speak from experience here. I have uh, a sister who's a, who's a principal in the Harlandale School District. I have a daughter who teaches kindergarten in the Northeast or North Northside uh, Independent School District. So I know how busy you all are and all the responsibilities you have. But this is extremely important. One in four girls will be sexually abused before their 18th birthday. One in six boys will be sexually abused before their 18th birthday. You think about a classroom of now uh, anywhere from 25 to 30 
uh, because of the number of, of students we have and, and not being able to bring on more teachers because of the budget cuts. And there are children in that classroom that have been or will be sexually abused. Um, I know uh, everybody in the country was um, unfortunately uh, fixated on the Jerry Sandusky case. We hope that we have learned from that case that even very large institutions can fail in protecting our children and can fail to report what's e what is obviously child abuse. And so we just, um, it's, it's a passion of mine, as you can probably tell, to make sure that we try to protect our children. And it's up to us as adults. It's not up to our kids. It's up to us as adults to protect the children that we have in our care, as parents, as teachers, as staff. And so um, I've got some information. I wasn't able to make copies for everyone, but I'd be glad to present it to uh, Madam President. I've got some information, um, some of the st statistic statistics, I'm sorry, um, that I just, uh, just gave you there. Also some information on who is extremely vulnerable to all kinds of abuse. Um, certainly our children um, overall generally can be, but children with uh, disabilities are two times more likely to be abused. Young children, children who are coming from homes where uh, domestic violence are a problem. And when I was uh, Chief Operating Officer for Child Safe, over 50% of the kids that we saw that had been sexually abused had domestic violence uh, in their families. And so that's a huge um, uh, risk for our kids. Uh, so I'm going to be provide that information. And then lastly, I've also provided you uh, some booklets and some information about a national curriculum that is recommended by the Child Advocacy Centers of Texas. It's called Darkness to Light. It's put out by Stewards of the Children. I provided the website so that you all can look at that. Uh, it is a very well known um, and uh, has, uh, includes best practices in how to raise awareness and how to better protect our children. Uh, through training. And so I'm going to provide that information for you. I'd be glad to answer any questions if you all have any questions on this. Thank you. We're not allowed to ask questions unless ah. it's an agenda item, but thank you okay. for your willingness. Sure. We appreciate it. Sure. And is it all right if I provide this? Certainly. Thank you. Okay. All right. Thank you. Next item. 10 board member requests for items to be placed on next month's agenda. Are there any board members who have a request for items on next month's agenda? Okay, next item. 11, discussion and possible action regarding board member requests for reports from the administration. Uh, that's no action. no action there. Next item. 12, adjournment. Woohoo. 7.42. Wow. Yay. Thank you for attending our meeting. Light.